known for his larger-than-life personality and natural-born talent from behind the wheel of a race car, the Jersey Jet Joey Payne found himself in a new yet familiar seat for the 2012 Novella Supermodified season at Oswego Speedway. After spending the past few years in the strong racing number 99, earning multiple feature wins along the way, Payne moved over to the Mike Muldoon Racing number 20 to begin the year. Despite a rough opening night, which saw Payne tangle with the new driver of the 99, Mike Barnes, Payne kept his head up and two weeks later charged on to his best run of the year during the Jim Champagne Memorial 75. After going to victory lane in his qualifier, Payne passed Dan Connors Jr. to take the lead and looked as though he was on his way to his first career feature win driving for Mike Muldoon. But with only three laps remaining, Otto Sitterly blasted to the high side of the speedway to steal the victory, his second consecutive to start the year. That second place effort catapulted Payne to a string of six consecutive top ten finishes, including another podium finish during the Davis Brothers Incorporated Grand Prix 75. A fine fifth place run in the Mr. Novella Supermodified event on August 4th made Payne a mainstay in the front three positions for the overall Supermodified Championship. But unfortunately for Payne, nine top ten finishes and four top fives would fall short of both Pat Lavery and Sitterly at season's end. Congratulations to the driver of the Mike Muldoon Racing, Top Quality Construction, All Car Care Auto Shop, Okino's Auto Sales, Muldoon Chassis, Joey Payne. While the driver of the Double Deuce may not have been the expert's pick for the track title this preseason, minds are already racing as to what could be in store for Pat Lavery in 2013. While Lavery has always been known as a consistent, steady runner with five top five finishes and points since 2006, his 2012 campaign could arguably be seen as his best yet, despite coming up short on visiting Chris Nelson Insurance Victory Lane for another year. Lavery kickstarted the season in May in grand fashion, setting fast time on opening night and backed it up with two consecutive top 10 finishes to start the year. And the month of June would prove even better. Using the outside of the speedway on restarts unlike anyone else this season, Lavery charged to a second place finish on Best Western Plus, quality in and sweets night on June 2nd behind Joe Gosick, and came back two weeks later with a fine third place run behind Mike Barnes and Michael Muldoon as a part of Universal Metalworks' Night at the Races. Lavery's consistent runs in June helped him creep back up on Otto Sitterly in the Novella Supermodified Championship as Sitterly had built a sizable lead in the early summer but had two crash field weeks in the mid-season. After trailing Sitterly by as many as 52 points early on, Lavery was now only six behind heading into the month of July. Galloway Century 21 and Turning Stone Resort and Casino night at the races on July 14th would kick off a trend that would pop up the rest of the season for Lavery and Sitterly in the battle for the title. As Ray Graham charged on to the win, Sitterly came home third, with Lavery stalking him in fourth. One week later, Graham picked up his second consecutive ROC win, as Lavery came home third with Sitterly sixth. Mr. Novella's Supermodified Night would see Cody Graham earn his first career victory and $10,000. But again, it was Sitterly and Lavery bumper to bumper in sixth and seventh. It seemed as though whenever Lavery may have the upper hand on Sitterly in the late season, the Nacotra Racing shoe would come right back knocking on the door. Despite having a championship caliber season with six top fives and 11 top 10 finishes, two more than Sitterly, Lavery came up just five points shy of Sitterly for the 2012 Speedway Championship as he went toe to toe with one of the best in the sport, making Lavery a clear favorite in 2013. Congratulations to the driver of the Great Lakes Performance Racing, Lighthouse Lanes, The Big Dipper, Chris Nelson Insurance, Hawk Chassis, Pat Lavery. Since 2006, Otto Sitterly has made his mark as one of the most prolific drivers in Oswego Speedway history, and he further cemented it in 2012. 
From 2008 to 2010, Sitterly and Nacotra Racing went on a tear, winning three consecutive Speedway championships, including the 2009 Budweiser International Classic. In 11, Sitterly attempted to become the first driver to win four consecutive championships, but he fell just short of Randy Ritzkis and Joe Gosick. This season, Sitterly returned locked and loaded, and like champions of the past at the Speedway, he started out hot and heavy. The number seven came out of the blocks quickly, outgunning teammate Davey Hamilton and taking advantage of a flat left front tire on the Dave Gruel number 50 to claim the checkered on Gator Racing News Palladium Times opening night at the Speedway, jumping out to the early point lead, claiming his fourth career opening night win. Just two weeks later, Sitterly was back at it, passing Joey Payne with only three laps remaining to earn the coveted Jim Champagne Memorial 75 victory, the third of his career tied for most all-time with newly crowned Oswego Speedway Hall of Famer Doug Didero and Greg Furlong. Two more top five finishes in early June led most to believe it was going to be a Sitterly runaway in 2012. However, a hard lick in turn three on June 16th and a wild upside down ride on the front straight on June 30th made Sitterly look human once again, allowing Pat Lavery to close to within six points of the championship lead. With Lavery now hot on his heels, Sitterly recovered as only a true champion would. Two weeks after his tumble down the front street, Sitterly took third to Ritzkis and Ray Graham, finishing just one spot ahead of Lavery. Sitterly's recovery ignited a string of five consecutive top ten finishes to end the season, including three more top five runs, beating out Lavery in three of the final six races of the season. Despite his tremendous recovery after the month of June, the title still came down to the final night of the season, with Sitterly edging Lavery by only 11 markers heading into track championship night. Lavery would be first on track in qualifying, struggling to a fifth place finish, leaving the door open for Sitterly to perhaps put the nail in the coffin before feature time. But in dramatic, almost movie-like fashion, Sitterly would get caught up in an early accident in his heat race, forcing him out of the running with an eighth place finish, and more importantly, relegating Sitterly to 20th on the grid for the championship main, some seven positions behind Lavery. Sitterly's lead would now be just eight, heading into the 50-lap finale with Lavery, meaning if both drivers finish in the top five, Lavery would have to edge Sitterly by at least three positions. Well, it didn't take long for Sitterly to charge through the field and find the back bumper of the double deuce. And Sitterly would stay glued to it the entire event. As Lavery came home fourth, Sitterly fifth, giving the driver from Canajahari, New York, his fifth Speedway title by a scant five-point margin. At the end of the season, two feature wins, seven top five finishes, and 11 top tens were just enough to move Otto Sitterly to fourth on the all-time championship win list, leaving him only behind Speedway Hall of Fame legends, Nolan Swift, Jim Champagne, and Bentley Warren. Congratulations to the driver of the Nacotra Racing, G&I Homes, Five Brothers Produce, SNL Beans Hawk Chassis, your 2012 Hoosier Racing Tire, Novella Supermodified Oswego Speedway Track Champion, five-time Otto Sitterly.